Hello. Today we live in a very complex world. So today I'd like to speak about what I think are the capacities of the mind that will help us deal with this complex world. Today almost everything is uh, not made of one piece, we could say. Everything is made up of a mixture of many things, of cashmere and sawdust, of love and hate, of good and bad, of this and that. And the question is how to make sense of it all. Of course, every generation has lived their own experience and thought about that as complex. And they were right, I think. But today, I think there's an added, added ingredient to complexity, and perhaps two ingredient, ingredient, ingredients, 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 is the speed of change. And the other is we have access to so much information now. As I travel around the world, one thing I hear from people is they say, we're burdened with information. Because a lot, a lot of times, in fact, most times I would say, the information is in the form of data points, or facts, or simple statements, and the question still remains, how do you connect those things? How do you connect those things to make sense? How do you connect those things to define the context in which those things make sense? This is the task of the present world we live in today, the task that we have to face. And as I travel around the world, of course I hear, I, I ask people a simple question, first of all. What is your life like nowadays? And of course, people have many things to say about that. But there's two stories that everyone says. I could be in Brooklyn, I could be in Bahia, I could be in Beijing, or everywhere in between. I hear two stories always. One story is, how do I deal with the tension between the past and the ever-approaching future? Put another way, how do I deal with the tension between tradition and modernity. Difficult. It's difficult because the mature response is not to throw out one or the other, but to see how they can be integrated into something new. That's the great task. The other story I hear from people, I call the world of two. T-O-O, -O, meaning excessive amount. And wherever I go, Again, it could be in Port Mosby, New Guinea, or the middle of Manhattan. I hear the same two, T-O-O. The world is too fast, too competitive, too complex. How do we deal with it? Well, a typical way of dealing with it now, particularly in business, or maybe even all institutions, be they educational, healthcare, uh, political, whatever, is let's collect a lot of data. And we have this expression in, in the language now, big data, meaning a lot of data. Well, big data, I'm here to say, doesn't necessarily mean big ideas or big insights. Okay, we still are faced with how do we deal with the big questions of life? Not like, okay, where is that person? We could locate them, GPS. Or what is their blood pressure? We could learn, we could give them that. And that's not trivial, but it doesn't address the real big issues of the world today and our life. So, let me give you one example of what I hear from people that's representative of a lot of sentiment. Here's one person talking. In, in terms of the response to this question, what's your life like nowadays? 
And this person says, quote, Nowadays, things are always advancing, getting better, sometimes for the worse. So it's not that things are getting better or they're getting worse. They're both together, <laughs> better and worse. Difficult. That's why we need an imaginative mind to deal with it. Another way people have of dealing with complexity is they focus on one thing and leave out everything else. Uh, most of the times, that's not very productive, although it makes us feel good. Um, I like a better attitude than that, uh, expressed by Bruce Springsteen. Okay, after all, he's called the boss, so maybe he knows something. He said something, I think, quite good. He said, um, if you could keep alive in your head and in your heart two contradictory ideas at the same time, if it doesn't make you crazy, it will make you strong. So the question is how to do that. And I think we need to do that because my idea about the present complexity of the world is, I think, best summed up by saying, if Shakespeare was alive today, he would have to rewrite his famous soliloquy of to be or not to be. The world of or is done with. That's a fairly simple world. It's a choice. This or that. Now we don't live in the world of or for the most part anymore. We live in the world of and. And that's highly complex world. And what I'm suggesting is there are five capacities of the human mind that help us deal with this complexity. So let me begin by just naming them and then I'll say a few words about each. Live a sensual life. Two, be curious. Three, be open. Four, allow your mind to make metaphor and address paradox in integrative ways, not in either or ways. Those, I think, are the keys to being imaginative in how we deal with this complexity of the world. So let me say a few words about each. Sensuality. Uh, I mean simply by that, register your own experience of your own experience. What I like to say is live in feeling. It's a, it's a very strange sentence, but the idea of it I'm trying to focus on. Live in feeling. Feeling is like an environment. Uh, feeling is like your house or your apartment and you could walk around in it and you could look around and you could see what's up. And that's hard to do nowadays, of course, because everything is so fast. <laughs> I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to go there, I got to be that. And when we take a moment or have a moment, take out the cell phone. Take out the cell phone. See what's happening in social media. In fact, there's research that shows people are actually becoming uncomfortable with being with their own feelings, even for a few minutes. That has huge implications. One implication is less creativity, because feelings are a wellspring of uh, stimulation for ideas. The other thing, quite important also, is the less you're able to feel your own feelings, the less able you are to feel other people's feelings. So in a sense, it makes the world more dangerous, I suggest. So live in feeling. And why do I say that? Because meaning arises 
from feeling. That's a big sentence. Meaning arises from feeling. I, I once had the um, event of uh, hearing Norman Mailer, the uh, Pulitzer Prize winning author, say something that I thought was quite profound and related to this idea of feeling. He says, uh, you can't get to an emotional truth through a truth, through a fact, through a piece of data. You can't get to an emotional truth through a truth. You can only get to a truth through an emotional truth. That's, that's the, the paramount admonition, if you would, about why live in feeling. Okay, so feel. Don't flatline. Don't get numb. Don't um, just live in the world of, I got to do this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and forget who you are and what you're feeling and what you're sensing and what you're being as opposed to what you're doing. Next is be curious. Open up that hood of life. See what's underneath. Not what you're told is underneath, what you discover is underneath. Meaning explore. See what you could discover. See what seems interesting. See, what's, see what seems repuls repulsive. And of course you do that through feeling. Get out of your comfort zone. Take a little risk. The big risk is not taking a risk. Because then you just exist in the status quo. That doesn't do you or the world any good, really. Except for a momentary sense of leisure or comfort. Third is uh, be open. I have a very simple idea about being open, which is you don't have to know the end at the beginning. Okay? You, you leave yourself open to be surprised. It's not just serendipity. It's not, okay, let everything be chaotic and see what happens. It's what I like to call directed serendipity, which means I have a plan. But I know as soon as I start enacting the plan and the plan meets up with the world, all hell is going to break loose, and that's what I love. It's not all pre-scripted. It's not all linear, sequential, logical, factual. It's emotional. And I'm not here to argue emotion, 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 forget logic, forget objectivity, forget... I'm saying, and, you got to have both, seamlessly, not I'll do some of this and I'll do some of that. I got to do it all together at one time. Openness. Next is what I call Metaphor making. Metaphor making, we have an emblem uh, up there, or was up there, or we've seen it. Connecting ideas. That's really the essence of metaphor making. You make connections, you make associations, you make link linkages between things that logically don't necessarily go together. But in your experience, in your sensuality, in your consciousness, and in your unconscious, somehow there's a link between the two. And that gives ideas a little more room to play in. Okay? When things that are seemingly unrelated get hooked up together, and you see how one can help inform the other, and what evolves from the joining. So, um, that's the importance. And the gift, really, of the mind is it's capable of metaphor. And lastly, paradox. I'm saying things can 
be or seem contradictory, and we just say, oh, well, that's just too complex or too contradictory. I've got to put one aside. No, you don't have to. Check it out first. See what underlies, if anything underlies, the commonality that could exist between seemingly contradictory ideas. Okay, see what, what are the dynamics of each. See what are the assumptions of each. See what are the connections and, and theories underneath each. And maybe there are things that support each other. Some things don't. Fine. But some things might. And they'll give you an idea of something new. So, this idea of, I like to call it living an artistic life. Not that we all are artists. I'm not an artist, for me, okay? But if I'm engaged in these five processes, I could still live an artful life. At my own scale, in my own way, in my own life. I could never be a Picasso. I could never be Mahatma Gandhi or these great geniuses touched by the gift. But I could be the most imaginative Bob. And that's, whatever that is, that's okay. That's good, matter of fact. So what I'm suggesting is, let's go back to the beginning. It all starts with feeling. Don't numb out. Don't just enter into a day as a routine. Every day should be a discovery, a look inside. See what's up with you and how you feel about the world. And as I'm saying, that that's, generates the beginning of imaginative ideas. And most of these ideas do not come out you as direct and as a big trumpet. Okay, some do, but most don't. And I've heard Steven Spielberg say something lovely about this idea. He says, when you're living a life that you're present to yourself in, right? He says, you have to listen for the whispers. Listen for the whispers and use that to help you understand and engage with yourself and with others to address the big, complex questions of life. And in that way, you become more vital. Your vitality becomes contagious and infectious with others. And now we're on our way. As a beginning, it's difficult dealing with complexity. But, once you engage in these five essential capacities, I've seen it so many times, it becomes addictive. It's fun. It makes you feel alive. And it's necessary in this world today. So, live in feeling. I wish you many imaginative ideas. Thank you.